make sure you choose the right way for what you really like and you want your genetics for. Okay, that's why people sometimes say, oh, big Rami is big like that because it takes lots of drugs. Man, it's completely the opposite. These people, they are the most scary people that I, that I know. They don't use that great amount of drugs that people think that they use. They are so scared. They are so afraid because just to carry, imagine the, the heart of that guy. Imagine the heart yeah. of Ronnie Coleman. All the blood that that heart needs to pump. Hi guys, Christian Williams here from another episode of CW Physique Transformation, the podcast where we connect the minds of like-minded people, all willing to share their passion and their thirst for knowledge to you, so you can turn that into wisdom and it can help you on your own chosen path. Today, we have a very good friend on the show, a familiar face. We have Nelson Vigueras. He is a personal coach. He has more credentials than most people and he has a lot of knowledge to back him up. We've had a lot of demand to get him back on tonight's show. So we got this meeting and this podcast, this episode kind of last minute just to bring to you guys. It's going to be an exciting one. We're going to talk about some post psychotherapy, the do's and the don'ts and anything in between. So you're in for a treat. And Nelson, thank you again, my friend, for coming on at such, such short notice. Uh, I thank you. It's always an honor and a pleasure to be here with you and to share some new and um, valuable information to all our viewers. So let's go. Let's go. I really appreciate that. And guys, if you haven't checked out yet, there's a link below for the previous episode. We talked about testosterone, low testosterone, how to make sure your testosterone is functional at the optimum levels. And today, one of the topics, like I said, that we want to discuss is post psychotherapy. Now, first question I have for you, Nelson, is how important is post psychotherapy? Uh, okay, uh, let's uh, let's just explain a little bit what what is post psychotherapy for our viewers that they have not too much experience on that. So, post psychotherapy it means that you you do a therapy to recover from a cycle. Just the word cycle by itself, uh, I don't really agree with that idea, okay? And I will explain you later why I say that. But the post cycle is very important when you use cycles to see a result. And I'm gonna give you a very small example for you to understand. Imagine that you, you have a person, a man, that has 500 nanograms of, of testosterone per deciliter of blood. This guy comes to a doctor, to a trainer, whatever, he starts doing a cycle. So his testosterone jumps from 500 to 2,000, 2,500 nanograms per deciliter of blood. It remains that in that range for eight weeks, 12 weeks. And then when you finish a cycle, we do, uh, uh, we, we calculate the, the starting of the, the PCT with six half lives of the last longer drug that he took it so imagine he took a, a testosterone annotate which has a half-life of around eight to nine days so it you multiplicate that from eight to nine days times six and then you, it's time to start the the post cycle therapy if it's a propionate which is two to three days you multiplicate that number two to three times six so it's going to be 18 days after or 20 days after okay so this is what happened so Imagine a situation of a guy that is 500, he jumps to 2,000, 2,500, and, does, and then he does a, a, a post cycle therapy. What's going to happen? We're going to try to restore his axis, we call the HTP axis, so which is the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the testicles. So when you try to recover this axis, what's going to happen is those 2,500 starts to drop, okay? And then you start to using drugs that I'm going to explain in detail to try to produce again our, L our LH and our FSH, so our testosterone and our spermatozoids. So we, we're going to try to increase the, this production. So what's going to happen is you are 500, you jump to 2,500, and then you're going to start going down, 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 down until you go below those 500. That's why I say that I don't like cycles. Or you take testosterone or you don't take testosterone. Because every time you do a cycle, you go from an average situation. When I say average, it's overall, so health, 
training, mood, sexual uh, drive, any, everything related to testosterone. So you go from 500 to 2,500. So you go for an average man to a superman. And then you go to a below man. So you're gonna, you're gonna be a weak man in that period. Even if you try to restore the axis, it will take time. And what people do, the mistake that people sometimes they do, they do very short PCTs, very short post-cycle therapy. So they use example, long life stairs, like annotate or, or cpinate or whatever. And, and then they start the, 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 the post-cycle therapy straight away after the cycle, they do it for three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. That's a big mistake. So if you really want to go and jump to a cycle, so if you want to do cycles, I don't believe in cycles. I believe that you should do a blast and you should do a cruise, okay? And then in a period, in a certain period of the year, you should do a stop, okay? So what we do in a, in a that, that's why it's always good to see which, which client are you talking about. Imagine you are a competitive bodybuilder. What you do, you wanna do, you wanna have a, a competition, for example, in august so you want to start a cycle you do a cycle until you reach the best potential of your shape in august when you finish you don't stop the drugs so what we do we go for a cruise after august so in august we try to maintain you in a cruise and then you go for a trt from imagine a cruise september and then you go for a trt which is just for people to understand what these these mm -hmm. words they mean so Blast, it's a super physiological dosage of testosterone. So the normal range is between 250 nanograms per deciliter of blood and 900. Some books say 850, but let's make 900 to be simple for the people to understand. 250 to 900. So you jump to 2,500, 3,000 nanograms, sometimes even more. I saw blood tests of sometimes 6,000, 7,000. So when you go to this level of testosterone, so you go from... 500 to this, and you maintain. When you are there in that in that range of of, um, of 3,000, then when you start going down, the results also starts going down. So what we do, we try to maintain some of those results with our cruise, and then you go for an, a, a TRT. So that TRT means uh, testosterone replacement therapy, which you, you, I'm going to put you in a a physiological dosage. So you are in the supra physiological range, and now you go to a physiological. So you jump to supra to a little bit higher. Why? Because I want you to maintain the results. I know that you gain 10, 20 kilos or 15 kilos, you're going to lose five kilos. So you cannot compare what 2,500 nanograms of testosterone does in your body. Same thing that it does with 1,000 or 1,500. It will drop. So this is for sure, my experience to speak with any professional doc doctor in this area, everybody will say the same thing. You cannot wait to take 2,500 or 3,000, and then you jump to a, 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 a PCT or a TRT and you keep the same muscle. It will not. This is being uh, cynical. I cannot be hypocrite or cynic and say, no, 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 you're going to keep the results. I'm going to give you a PCT. You're going to keep the results. And why you are not going to keep the results? Because those 500 that is your physiological cannot sustain the big amount of muscle that you have now. Okay. You need to do migration of the, the myonucleus. You need to do migration of satellite cells, satellite cells to the muscle fiber to create muscle. And for this, you need supra physiological dose of testosterone. As long as you go from supra to cruise to TRT or to PCT, there is a decrease. Okay. I don't know if this was clear enough. To yeah, explain yeah. the importance. So the mechanisms of the body. Sometimes mm -hmm. people say, okay, I do a cycle and I do a PCT. Class done, I'm so happy. <laughs> no, bro. Great, it's, yeah. It's and I, I think, you know, for, for people who don't quite understand, obviously, you know, by cycle, we're talking about a steroid cycle, you know, which is kind of, um, you know, whenever you do a, a steroid cycle, your natural production is going to shut down. So we are talking about, you know, going superficial, taking your testosterone up way, be, 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 uh, way above what it's meant to be. And then obviously the, the post care afterwards, you know, how are you going to taper down from that? So if you were taking, like, like Nelson said, you know, up to 900 milligrams a week, you know, over the course of a couple of weeks, it, each steroid is each testosterone 
is attached to a different ester and the ester mean in the oil. So the thickness of the oil will determine the release of the drug. So the thicker of the ester, the longer lasting it will be. And some have half-lives of, you know, 14 days and some have half-lives up to three days. So, you know, some you will need more frequently, but also some are gonna be out of the bloodstream a lot quicker than others. So obviously, you know, whenever you're doing a, a cycle that's heavy and it, it's a blast, then it's about, you know, not going from a blast to almost nothing and expecting to keep the gains. It's about going on to a, a kind of a lower dose to cruise before going on to a TRT. And the TRT is simply testosterone replacement therapy. So providing your body with what it kind of needs, um, you know, what it would naturally produce, probably at the, the mid to the eye range of the natural production in order for you to, to keep some, some form of not just the muscle gain, but some form of yourself. Because as Nelson was say, saying, once you start doing steroid cycles, your body will, you know, it will start reducing. So, you know, even to go back to the way, you know, you were that is going to be difficult, right? It's going to be, you know, once yeah, you start. Across the mechanism, and, and I'm sorry just to interrupt you, but it's important for the person to understand the mechanism because the mechanism, like we, like we said, it's, a, it's called axis. So the HTP axis, it means hypothalamus, pituitary, and testicles. They have different timings of recovery. We cannot think that, okay, the, the hypothalamus, it senses very fast that we, are, we have too much testosterone. And then he shuts down, he starts. So the, just to make a long story short, very, very short, I don't go to very biochemical, but just make a long story short, is in the hypothalamus, you produce two hormones, kispeptin, which acts on the gene uh, GPR54, and uh, gonadotrophin releasing hormone. So these two hormones that you produce in your, in your hypothalamus, they activate something that you have under the hypothalamus called pituitary, you can also call hypophysis. So in the interior part of the hypophysis, you produce two hormones, LH and FSH. This LH and FSH go to the testicles, so the FSH activates the sertoli cells, and the LH activates the leading cells. The leading cells, they produce testosterone, and sertoli cells, they produce gametas. So the, they produce the beginning of the sperm. So the spermatozoids is produced there as other processes going on. But just for you to understand how, so for, for people to understand how this really mechanism works. So when you try to recover the hypothalamus, it's the fastest thing to recover. But then the pituitary takes a few weeks to recover. And what really takes long to recover is the testicular atrophy. So the testicles, until the testicle starts to produce again, it can take months. If you do a cycle and you don't do any TRT, cruise, anything, PCT, there are people that they take more than one year to recover. Okay, mm -hmm. we are speaking about one year and a half, two years. Okay. So it can take longer to recover, just for you to see. And the problem is not the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus sends fast. It produces straight away these two hormones, kispeptin and glutathione releasing hormone, LH, blah, blah, blah. All this works. But when you get to the testicle, now that the testicles are, they stuff from atrophy. atrophy. Okay, they don't really atrophy 100%, but the atrophy like 90, 95, depends on the drugs that you are using. They are drugs that are very suppressive. For example, 19 nor, so testosterone 19 nor, we call nandrolone, trembolone. This is high suppressive. They suppress a lot. People think testosterone suppresses more, but it's not. The, the 19 nor, they are the, the most suppressive ones for the, for the axis. That's why it takes longer for him to recover from a cycle of, of trembolone or another one if you put it in a cycle, it takes longer than the other ones. So this is for people to understand this mechanism of recovery. And you have to think about not only the off-life, but also the drugs, the quantity and the time that you use. If you do a cycle of eight weeks, perfect. If you do a blast and cruise for the last five years, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. So the PCT that we're going to use, the drugs that we use, they are more or less the same. And you're going to speak about that also later to, mm. to, to finalize, to see what, exactly what drugs it's used, should be mm. used there. I like to use drugs, not only, or this type of drugs, not only after the cycle. Some of them I like to use during the cycle. And then I will explain you why this is, this is very important for me. For, there are lots of um, the books and authors and coaches that they don't like to, and, and I believe in that also. I don't like to create the full atrophy of the testicle. I like to keep giving some information to the testicle to keep the testicle running. Mm -hmm. If one day I need to stop, 
my testicle is not 90 or 95 percent suppressed it's only 60 or 50 percent it's much more easy because i know that the testicle is the problem i know that the testicle is what takes longer so what i give i give hcg hcg is or uh, good not the releasing hormone uh, sorry uh, it's the uh, Chorionic hormone, so uh, this hormone that, that, that mimics uh, luteinizing hormone. So this HCG is hormone that is, uh, uh, it, it acts on the gonadus. So what this HCG does is it mimics the LH, okay? Remember that I told you, LH stimulates the testicle to, um, to produce testosterone. So what this uh, HCG does, this substance, it's, mimics the other hormone so it doesn't really stimulate the pituitary but stimulates the testicle to so the testicle even if the pituitary stopped so there is no information of lh but there is another hormone that you inject that is giving information okay keep producing keep producing keep producing and so you don't never really stop the problem here is if you use hcg in a long period of time you, you there is a process called phosphorylation of the receptor what is the phosphorylation of the receptor? So more you activate the receptor with exogenous substances, hormones, whatever, you're going to lose phosphate. So you're going to lose the capacity or you desynthesize the receptor. So the receptor becomes less responsive to that drug. So my opinion is not to use the HCG in big quantities, like usually we use. So if you buy an ampule of HCG it comes on 1,500 IUs or 5,000 IUs. So 1,500 or 5,000. I recommend to use during the week, so during the cycle, 250 IUs per week. Those 250 IUs are not enough to desynthesize the, the, the receptor, but it keeps the stimulus there, okay? Keep producing. So you keep producing some of the, te the, the testosterone, not because of the testosterone going to make any effect on you, but it will not shut down completely. You do not create a complete atrophy of the testicle. So during the cycle, I like to use also HCG, not only in the end of the cycle. Another drugs that we, we, we use, it's clomifen. So clomifen acts on the brain. So stimulate, this one is a stimulation. So it stimulates the brain to produce FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. So this one is the one that goes in, start producing spermatozoids so imagine that you are doing a cycle the normal man is around uh, 140 million of, of of sperms and you jump you drop of course to 20 million so when you start using uh, uh, this this uh, uh, clomifen you start stimulating again fsh and then you start again 20 30 40 50 billion so you start increasing the number of 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 sperms again so this is what you do these two drugs and then we use also Tamoxifen. Tamoxifen is also a drug that I use, I like to use during the cycle. I don't like to use only after the cycle. Why uh, I like tamoxifen? Tamoxifen, it's a, this is another part of the conversation which I think is very important. It's not really something that really stimulates anything, okay? In the beginning, on, uh, on the 80s, when this drug was, de was developed, was for uh, try to stimulate also the pituitary to work better. So that's why it's called clomifen, tamoxifen. So they are from the same family, okay? But the actions are completely different. Tamoxifen has a very mild effect on the pituitary. So what, what tamoxifen does? Tamoxifen acts as an estrogen. So he acts, he has receptors where he has, he's an agonist of estrogens, and he has receptors that he has antagonists of estrogens. Mm -hmm. I like because he acts as an agonist in the bones, so in the bone, he acts as an estrogen, so makes your bone stronger. Uh, another thing that I like a lot is, you know that the, the tendons, the, what regulates the strength of the tendons, of course, is growth hormone, uh, collagen type 1, type 2, but the hormone that is really responsible for that is estradiol. So if you take something that, in, that mimics the estradiol, the risk of injury is reduced. And I'm going to tell you why am I speaking about this? Because if you use aromatized inhibitors like uh, aromazine, like letrozole, like uh, exemestan, if you use this type of drugs, this is completely different. And I will explain you later. So just to keep on the tamoxifen and then I will go to this anti-aromatase. So when you use tamoxifen, tamoxifen does another thing, removes the bad cholesterol from the liver. So tamoxifen during the cycle, small quantities to control the 
uh, receptor on your uh, on your nipples. So in your nipples, the, we have receptors for estrogens. So this tamoxifen it acts as an antagonist. So it binds to the receptor and it doesn't allow the estrogen to bind in the receptor. Okay, so tamoxifen is very important because it acts in some tissues as an estrogen, so as an agonist, and in some receptors, some tissues as an antagonist. That's why we like it because what is the big problem of the bodybuilders? The, the big problem is, oh, we increase estrogen and you have gyno, uh, gynecomastia. Okay, so this is the problem. What, and then people say, no, but I also want to control the estrogen. I don't want my estrogen to go very high. But remember about this, the, the, the ratio between testosterone and estradiol should be 5% of estradiol to 100% of testosterone. This is the ratio. Every time you take testosterone, what's going to happen? Like I said, let's go again to our friend that has 500 nanograms per deciliter. Okay, he has 500, and now he goes to 3,000. Where is the ratio now? Well, so, of course. The testosterone is very high compared to the estrogen. So the estrogen is very low. So if you don't want to get injured in the gym, if you want to keep your, your, your tendons healthy and your liver healthy and your lipid profile, right. don't take anti-aromatases. So don't mm -hmm. take anything that inhibits the aromatase. You need to let it aromatize yeah, yeah. a little bit to create this balance. Okay? This balance is, is crucial for your heart, for your brain, uh, man, it's, there is lots of studies on the brain of stradiol. Stradiol is, is a key factor for mm -hmm. cognition. So if you start taking uh, this, this uh, uh, three substances, that it's called um, anastrozole, letrozole, or exemestan, they block the aromatization. So the conversion of testosterone into estradiol by the enzyme called aromatase. Like I explained in my uh, previous video, people that they are overweight, they have lots of aromatase because aromatase is produced on the fat tissue. So we don't, uh, you see how important it is to have a low body fat it's because fat, it's, a, it's like a gland. It's like a hormonal gland. You produce hormones in your fat. One of the hormones, one of the, in this case, it's not hormones, it's an enzyme, it's called aromatase. So mm -hmm. aromatase converts all the testosterone that you are taking into estradiol. You understand? So you should keep this ratio and don't block. So what, what bodybuilders they do? No, no, I want to, I want to, estradiol is very bad. Let's cut the estradiol down. Let's put the testosterone high. And everybody knows now that estradiol is a key factor for libido. Remember, you have three yes. hormones that they are very important for your sexual performance. Testosterone gives you the will, the manly, the, the wanting. The libido is controlled by estradiol and the erection is controlled by the eater testosterone. So pay attention when you try to reduce all these hormones, because we always think, okay, testosterone is going to be reduced. It's called reduced because it's by an enzyme called 5 alpha reductase. So you convert testosterone into the either testosterone. So be very careful when you reduce too much this testosterone, and also be very careful when you have a too much conversion of testosterone into estradiol. And now you're going to ask me, but how, how do I know that? with blood tests. So exactly. blood tests in the beginning of the cycle, I want to see how you are. And I want to see how you are after eight weeks, 12 weeks of cycle. Okay, this guy is really is converting too much. We need to stop the aromatization or mm -hmm. reduce the aromatization. So we need to create this ratio five, never, never more than 10%. So this is the ratio between testosterone and the studio. If you start going 10, 15, and 20% of estradiol, then you have too much estradiol. Then you have other, other side effects. So excess of estradiol also has depression, is related to depression and other things. So we should always keep this range. Of course, when you come out of this cycle, that's why I say that I don't like cycles. When you come out of the cycle, what's going to happen? Estradiol is here, testosterone yeah, yeah. is here, and then boom. Testosterone goes We get all the negative side effects from that. And then you get all the side effects. You don't want to train. You feel like a girl. You don't have will for nothing. You don't have nothing. No, you, you, you cannot do anything. You feel, you feel useless completely. Not only is it testosterone drop, but the opposite kind of hormone has been elevated. Exactly. You feel exactly. twice as worse. Exactly. So there's a few things. So one of them is, obviously, let's talk about cycles, right? So, you know, the average cycle most people would do is between 12 and 16 weeks, really, if, especially if they are, you know, at the competitive nature. Some people yeah. might do weaker drugs for like eight weeks, you know, we talk about Anavar and wind straws, maybe, although they could be considered beneficial. 
when combined with other drugs. But if you were doing some injectable form of like testosterone and maybe like equipoise or nandrol and these type of drugs, you're looking probably 12, around 16 weeks. So let's, some, yeah. so let's say somebody pushed that testosterone, like you said, to around 900 milligrams per week. What you're saying is rather than kind of, you know, on X days so or 16 weeks after, you wouldn't be doing a, a PCT. How long would you recommend them blast on? And if they were to blast, what dosage would you get a blasting on? And also, would the blast be a good time then to start introducing the ACG and the Clomid and the Tamoxifen? Or would you say that you would continue to use 250 IUs of ACG consistently throughout yeah. the cycle? Yeah, I will. Uh, let's uh, give you a real example of this. Let's, let's, let's give a real example of 16 weeks of, of anabolic steroids. And uh, <clears throat> what I like to do is like this. Imagine, uh, again, a, a competitive bodybuilder. So what we do is we use the long ester uh, um, compounds, so the cipinates, the emetates, so the long ones on the beginning of the cycle, OK? This gives you what? This gives you time for you to start for the, the, last, the last period. So I don't like to use the same drugs forever. Uh, not because testosterone is different, because testosterone is testosterone, but the other compounds, they work on different ways. So I like to use one testosterone, so I don't mix testosterone. Imagine I use, let's let's give an example. Testosterone annotate, 500 milligrams. 500 milligrams of, of, uh, of testosterone easily jumps your, your blood test to 2,000 nanograms per deciliter of blood. So remember that the milligrams of testosterone, it's not the same number of, mm -hmm. of the nanograms in your... In your yeah, like. One thing is milligrams, another thing is nanograms. Another thing that people should understand is uh, two, 200, or let's give a, a, a number easy to, to remember, 100 milligrams of anethate only have 70 milligrams of testosterone. 73, it's around 73, okay? Yeah. So, so when people... And just so you know, sorry... That's because of the, the density of the oil, right? So and the, the oil weighs up the, the ester, it exactly. gives the rest. Exactly. So, so like not, yeah. exactly, exactly. So this is important to say because people sometimes they say, I, I take uh, four sustenon. So I'm taking 1,000. No, you are taking 800. You're not 1,000. So if you want to put it all to so, so 800 milligrams of testosterone will jump your testosterone, your testosterone in, nano, in nanograms in your blood per deciliter to around 2,000. Okay, so... Just for people to understand, because sometimes this is difficult for us. This is normal conversation. We can sit, you know, one thing has nothing to do with the other one. Okay, don't confuse milligrams in the ampule that you are injecting with the nanograms in your blood. Okay, it's two different things. Huh? And then course. remember, all this testosterone has, it goes in several pathways. SHBG, DHT, estradiol. So it's not free testosterone that is circulating in your body so that's why when i do the blood test with my with my clients i always ask for shbg which is sexual binding hormone globally to see how much of that that of the testosterone it's binding to that shbg okay because most most of, of times what happens is you take lots of testosterone but you have lots of production of shbg and then that testosterone is it doesn't connect to the receptor because mm. to, for the receptor, testosterone connects like this. With, if, he, if he has a SHBG connected to the testosterone now, it cannot. So it doesn't work on the receptor, non the receptor in the muscle. Okay, so this is some exams that we ask. We can make a video on that. Which mm. exam should you, should you ask in the beginning of a cycle, in the middle of a cycle, in the end of a cycle? Again, if you decide to do a cycle, I don't like to, to call cycles. I like to call blasts, cruise, TRTs and stop. Flex Lewis, stop is, is for after this competition and all this competition that he did for Mr. Olympian, he was just seven times Mr. Olympian. He stopped every, when he finished the, the competition. Well, he goes to Mr. Olympia, he wins the title. After, after the competition, he stopped everything. So he does a small he does a small uh, cruise TRT and then he stopped. He stopped training for one month. Dexter Jackson, same thing. Okay, you want you want to say probably other ones don't do. Okay, Dexter Jackson, he competed until 52 years old. Mm. Flex Willis, Flex Lewis is healthy. He has an amazing body still. He, he can compete tomorrow if he decides to compete, he's going to compete tomorrow. So you want to tell me that these guys they are not examples, they don't know what they are doing. Man, 
all of the bodybuilders that I know, and they are, they last yeah. long, they do this. Why? Because they don't want these crashes. They don't want these cycles and and, 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 and try to, with the PCT, try to recover something that is irrecoverable because you're going to recover your normal production. Yes, you do. But remember, to keep those muscles, a guy that is 110, 115 kilos, he needs lots of testosterone just to sustain that muscle. So you cannot think, oh, no, 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 I'm going to stop all my drugs and I'm going to keep my 115 kilos of muscle with 10% body fat. I'm sorry. You don't have enough trucks to deliver of course. <laughs> so yeah. much demand of that muscle. That muscle needs demand. Mm -hmm. So you need nutrients, but you also need information. Who gives information? Testosterone is a hormone. What is a hormone? A hormone is a messenger. So you need the information. Okay, guys, let's produce muscle. Okay, the training does that, but the training and the food is not enough if you don't have the engineer no. to control the, 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 the building. You need the workers, you need the, you need the material, but also need the engineers. The engineers are the hormones. They are the ones that say, okay, you go here, you go there, you now more, now less, now more this, now less this, mm -hmm. now more. This what they control what your body does, okay. I don't know if it's if this is was clear and this explanation. So yeah. in terms of to go back to our to, to your question, the blast and the cruise, 16 week cycle. Okay, a guy has a competition. He finished his competition, he finished his cycle. So you start with the long stairs um, drugs. So you start with, for example, 500 milligrams. I don't like to go more than 500, 750, it depends on the body weight of the, of the bodybuilder. So maximum 1000 if he's more than 110 kilos. If he has more than, 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 than 110 kilos, I can give 1000 milligrams of testosterone. Then I can give you uh, equipoise, for example, and I can give you I can give him uh, a DECA or something like that. And then I change the drugs. When I go a little bit more, I go to a CPNA. So then I go to a CPNA. Then I go to uh, primobolin. I go to other drugs. And then when I finish the preparation, so remember that I need those six half lives. Remember what is what I said in the beginning of the video. So if the half life of the, what means half life is also important for people to understand. What is half life? Half is the half of the dosage will be in the blood after that time. It's not the end of the life. Huh? These mm -hmm. people sometimes say, oh, the drug lasts 10 days. No, it doesn't last 10 days. Yeah, half, half life, half dosage is 10 days. And then after mm -hmm. 10 days, after 20 days, you have half of the half. Now you have one yeah, quarter. Yeah. And this creates what we call the pileup. So it piles up. Mm. So sometimes when you take 500 milligrams of testosterone, you think you are taking 500 milligrams of testosterone for 16 weeks. No, and when you get to the 16 week, mm. you pile up because you take it every week. So imagine a drug that lasts 10, 10, yeah, yeah. 10 days in your blood. So you take 500 milligrams on the first week, but seven days before it drops the half-life, you are giving 500 more. So now you have 570, mm. for example. And then on the next week, you have 570. You put 500 more. Now you don't have 570. Now you have 600. Mm -hmm. So you want to pile up the drugs. When you, enter, when you get to the end of the cycle, it's a huge pile up of drugs. So the easiest way is use the long stairs drugs on the beginning to you pile up in the beginning, but then the half-life of those drugs start disappearing, start going down, and you start giving drugs with less half-life. It's easier to control until, until you get to a propionate with less two to three days. When you have a propionate, remember what I told you. So six half lives times two or times three depends if depends on the metabolism of the the metabolism of the person. There are people that metabolize testosterone very fast. They, the drug lasts two days, the other one's three days. So it's two to three days. So let's make a simple number two days. So if the propionate lasts two days, so six times two, it's 12 days. After 12 days, that propionate, that propionate is almost all gone. Okay, so his half-life is gone. So now he's Less and less and less. And one and the funny thing is people sometimes don't know, but the propionate as the one is the one uh, only trembolone and nandrolone has more concentration of drug in an ampule. Okay, so propionate as the one is 83. So remember I told you 100 milligrams mm -hmm. of, of testosterone in an ampule only have 73, like enotate, for example, but propionate has 83, the other one has 86, and another one has 87. So nandrolone and, and trembolone. So trembolone is the one that has more in, a, in an ampule. So mm -hmm. What is the, the procedure that I, that I like to use? This is not one size fits all, of course. Like I said, this is controlled by exams. If I see that I give, uh, man, I had a client, he, used, he, was, he was taking 250 milligrams of testosterone. After three days, he came with me with gyno. Bro, man, I, man, I feel gyno. I feel, I'm going to, you think I'm going to give 1000 milligrams of testosterone to this guy? He's a, he's a high responsive, he's very sensitive. So we need to see 
with what we said in the last video, mm -hmm. with, what is the clinic? So what is the complaints of the client? And then with the blood test, you cannot do blood tests every day, but you do it like every two months. Okay. Or every month you do a blood test and you check, check okay, let me see how is the stradiol, let me see how is the cholesterol, because remember every time you take testosterone, your HDL goes down, your LDL goes up. So the lipid profile changes. Okay. The, tri the triglyceride doesn't change too much. Only uh, if you are using some, some oral, some 17, uh, we call C17s, you know, the like uh, oxymethylone. But also, in Bicu, I like oxymethylone, but uh, I can explain you this in another video, why I like oxymethylone, because I don't use it, I don't take it. I, I use it under the tongue. So it, it, it uh, skips the first passage of the liver. So it reduces a lot of the liver effects. Of the, so when you use orals like oxymethylone, oxymethylone is also a drug that I don't like, but oxymethylone, I love that drug. But I put it under my tongue. But this is this is uh, pharmacology. It's another conversation. So, so you can live this this uh, um, uh, short uh, half life substances for the end of the cycle. Okay, we finish now our 16 week. The guy goes to the stage. So he's using now propionate, using uh, masteron, for example, chambolone, and using oral oxymetolone under his tongue two to three times per day. He's, he's using T3. He's using growth hormone. You can use some cardarine, and that's it. That's that's like a protocol. He finished this. When he finished, I, I taper out. I start taper out everything. So I don't really stop the drugs. I continue the drugs, but I taper out slowly. And then when we go, again, let's forget about the conversation of the cruise and the TRT. The guy really, no, so I really want to stop. I want to rest for two weeks. I have holidays with my family. I really want to recover. I want to feel I don't want to bring injections and syringes with, to Maldives or whatever. I don't want to carry all these things with me. No worries. Let's do uh, 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 post psychotherapy. So then you start. We did 200, like I said at the beginning of the video, we did 250 IUs of HCG during the cycle. So all the cycle, you use the, the, the HCG. So when you pass the half life, so those 12 days after you, you use the propidate, Remember, propionate is fast. Masteron is also fast. So all these drugs are very fast. The orals are very fast. The, the one that lasts more is tanozolol, lasts 24 hours. Most of them, they last eight hours, six hours, like oxandrolone, oxymetalone, eight hours. So when the half-life of all the substances is, is, is it's over, I give him the HCG, but, not, but now I will not give him 250 IUs. Now I'm going to give him 1,500 every other day. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now I start with my clomifen. I don't use clomifen during the cycle. I use the tamoxifen during the cycle. So inside my cycle, I put him with tamoxifen. If, like I said, the blood test is, is telling me his estrogen is really high, this is a guy that has a huge conversion of testosterone into estradiol, I give him exemestan. I don't like letros, so letros are the strongest one, but there is something that people should understand. Uh, I'm going to explain it also very fast. There is the reverse connection or reversible connection and the irreversible connection. So these three drugs, letrozole, anastrozole, and exemestan. So always remember all. So anastrozole and uh, letrozole, they are reversible. Exemestan is irreversible. It means what? You produce aromatase, they come and they connect. Okay? And then it's it's reversible. So when you stop taking the anastrozole or the letrozole, you have a huge amount of estrogen, okay? Because you convert testosterone, so they, they are reversible. Exemestan is irreversible. So you drop your estrogen too much because you need to wait now for the body to produce more aromatase because it's irreversible. So you, we call it a suicide drug. So he goes there and he kills completely the, the, the aromatase. He's an aromatase in inhibitor. So he inhibits completely and it's irreversible. He cannot go back. So that's why I like to use exemestan. People say, oh, but letrozole is strong. Yes, letrozole is strong, but it's reversible. As soon as you stop, you have a huge rebound. So your, your estradiol is here or your aromatase production is here and you are trying to block all that aromatase. As soon as you stop taking, what you have now, kilos of aromatase. What that aromatase will do, convert all the testosterone that you are taking or, the, or are still piling up in your blood, all of them will be converted into estradiol. So now you have a rebound of excess of estradiol. You understand? So mm -hmm. It's very important to understand this. 
all it's very interesting okay it's called reversible and irreversible connection that's it so yeah so so you do this you do the tr so you would do the the cruise let's say they want to do a cruise let's say they do and they not go to the maldives and then you would you know taper the cruise down so if you were doing like a, a let's say a 900 milligrams what would the cruise be what type of dosage would you run on so 900 milligrams you are consider all the drugs together okay so yeah of course 500 milligrams testosterone uh, whatever else. so all together yeah. 900, 900, 900 milligrams okay so what you want to do it's you want to decrease the product so you remove all the drugs except testosterone yes because that testosterone is your testosterone okay that's similar to what you produce so you don't need boldenone on now you don't mm -hmm. need nandrol on now you don't need tremble on now you don't need nothing you remove all those drugs and then I, I i did this with some of my clients and i had amazing results like i said i don't like to use more than 500 honestly when i use 750 of millions of testosterone i don't feel good i don't feel like i feel i'm always waiting for my client to call me and something is wrong i have water retention i have this i have that so i like to use the 500 imagine this guy of the 900 500 is is um mm. is testosterone no? only the rest is, is the other drugs so i keep those 500 okay or i can reduce a little bit to 400 but i don't reduce too much mm. okay so i remove the other drugs but i keep the the, the 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 same testosterone and then after a while i go to a trt so i put him in a physiological because mm. i want to stop it if it's a, a bodybuilder i will not stop i will continue to cruise with 500 milligrams of testosterone if he really wants to stop or he knows i want just to do a competition or i want to be good for the summer i want to do a cycle so i will do cruise 500 and then trt trt what is the production of testosterone of a normal man it's a, it's around 70 milligrams per week so what is 70 milligrams per week it's 100 milligrams of annotate so like i said 73 so 100 milligrams of annotate or I like uh, I like sustanon because sustanon can give me a little bit more stability because the enate gives me a peak and then it goes down. The other ones has four stairs, has the propinate, the, the iso uh, capra weight, has the decan weight, so has four stairs that really can sustain that that testosterone for a little bit longer. So I like sustanon. So let's give to this guy just half of ampule of sustanon per week. Half of ampule will put him in a TRT. And then after the TRT, we go for a, a PCT cycle. No? So now he dropped. But he needs to understand he's going to lose some muscle mm. because it's impossible to sustain uh, muscle like if you, when he was in 900 and now he's in 100. So he, 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 it's, it's impossible. Of course, we, can, we uh, will adapt the diet, the training, everything to reduce a little bit the volume of training, but keep the heavy weights because when you keep the heavy weights, the body feels the need to keep the muscle. The big problem is people feel stronger when they are in cycles. So they are on cycles if they train stronger. As soon as they stop the cycle, they start lifting. And then I'm going to start a little bit lighter. I'm going to start because now I don't want to get injured. And I don't feel, they don't feel that will, that power that testosterone gave you. So that testosterone gives that, that will of, of doing things. It's not just sexual, but it's the will yes, of doing do yes, something. So you want yeah. to go to the gym. You want to you don't need a pre-workout. You want yeah, to go as well, the competitiveness. Yeah, of course. It's exactly. It's it's like a male hormone. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. you compete in for male the, or not. Yeah, exactly. You compete in for the opposite sex, and there's there's a lot of it. Obviously, some animals they they live their life and they don't even have sex because of that because they don't have that testosterone or that competitive nature. So they just you know they just uh, wear away. So you probably would do like on a sixteen week cycle. Obviously, you do like you know you do the cycle. You push it wherever it's a a sixteen week you know leading through from long esters into, you know, fast to ester if it's for the competition, or if it's just like a, a 12 to 16 week off season type of, you know, push where somebody was to add the mass. You do the cruise end for probably like four weeks, four to six weeks. Depends on, depends on, 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 on the, the, of the life of the cycle. If you give me 16 weeks of cycle, mm -hmm. if you give me four weeks of, of cruise and you give me four weeks of TRT, the, the, the PCT, it, it's never less than 12 to 16 weeks. Don't yes. come down, don't believe that you're gonna recover your, your, your 16 plus four plus four. So you're gonna recover from your eight, uh, 24 weeks cycle no? in two weeks. That's not gonna happen. No. So you need to keep stimulating, pushing your body. And then obviously you can use some phytotherapics. 
I like to use, like I said in the last video, I like to use three boost terrestrials, these particles, but the problem with these particles is the dosage is really uh, effective. It's, it's more than five grams. And if you take five grams of these particles, you're going to have diarrhea. Mm -hmm. So three boost terrestrials is, is still one of the best. There, there is lots of them. Maca, I like to use Epimedium also. Epimedium is very good. It's called, it's a plant called Orbi Goat, but the name is Epimedium. It gives you lots of sex drive, so it gives you will. Tribulus mimics the, the, the role of testosterone in the brain. So tribulus for me, it's very good. And tribulus does another thing. It increases the volume of the sperm. So when you are in this process of your testicles are growing again, they are, you know, they are like uh, uh, coming from a, from a partial atrophy to produce again a sperm, to produce again. So you stimulate the testicles, you stimulate something called the uh, seminal gland. It's a gland that produces mm -hmm. semen. So you produce the, you increase the volume. So you feel, man, I feel better now because now I feel that my testicles are bigger. I feel that my, my I'm producing more testosterone. I'm producing more sperm and I'm producing more quantity of sperm when I have an orgasm, it's more intense. So also L-carnitine does that also. So you can add L-carnitine. Uh, L-carnitine increases the quality and the mobility of the sperm. So if you want to get a woman pregnant, L-carnitine is a good supplement to use. So that's great. I mean, look, you know, you're in this for the long run. And anybody who is, is going to be using anabolic steroids, um, you know, for whatever reason, whether that's competition or you just want to put on the size, it obviously needs to be a lot of care, whether that's, you know, post-cycle care or during cycle care. You definitely want to be having a reverse plan because, you know, you, you yeah, it's funny when, when people say, you know, especially, you know, people wanted to make a start and they think, you know, am I going to lose my gains? Well, it's like, look, you know, if that stuff you were taking didn't do anything, then why would you take it? So, of course, you're not going to hold on to what that stuff was giving you, but you're going to do the best you can through, like you were mentioning, training, the right nutrition, the right supplements, and the right kind of um, escape exit plan. So, what I want to ask you is, obviously, you know, now say you have a lot of education and you understand blood work tremendously well, and there's something that you know, closely monitor. If you don't monitor with your doctor, you monitor with somebody who is, you know, as educated as you and knows exactly what to look for. Otherwise, it's a, just a guessing game for people, you know. And that's, you know, part of the reason why we get you on here is because, you know, we get that message from you. You're very, you know, intellectual and you have a lot of good understanding. So, obviously, you know, when you're using, let's talk about like a milder kind of cycle. We talk about like an eight-week Kind of like an anavar cycle. Now we know anavar can have a also, you know, negative effect on your testosterone, depending from person to person. Would you be doing the same? Would you be having, you know, kind of that, uh, you know, TRT, not TRT, but the the post cycle therapy or the HCG, or would you go again on blood work? And if so, how often would you be regulating the blood work during a cycle of, say, anavar, you know, uh, trianabol? Or these kind of like uh, you know milder oral agents of mm -hmm. testosterone. Okay, uh, first we need to see if it's a woman or if it's a man. I don't like oxandrolone or anavar. I don't like oxandrolone because oxandrolone in a man, for you to see some effect less than 100 milligrams per day, it's almost nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and I see people using 40, 30, 40 milligrams. And I see women using these quantities, which is very high for a woman. And I see men also using this quantity, which is very low for, for a man. Okay, the problem of oxandrolone, for example, you give me that example, Diana Ball or, mm. or any type of C17s. You call C17s because they have a change in the carbon 17. Okay, so on the structure of the, of the molecule, they have, a, they have, a, they have a alkyla there. So it changes the, so it's, it, 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 makes, it makes the substance pass two times by the liver. So it doesn't break down on the first passage of the liver. So this type of C17s, they are very liver toxic. So that makes us pay more attention to the liver. Testosterone is zero toxic liver, okay? If you use testosterone, you don't have to worry about testosterone. Uh, you, sorry, if you do testosterone, you don't have to worry about your liver, liver enzymes, homocysteine. You don't have to worry about nothing of this because testosterone doesn't decrease any en liver enzymes. But when you use C17s, it's different. Now you have to look when you ask for the blood test to the doctor, you know that your artery use C17s. Now you have to check the liver. How is the liver enzymes? And remember, when you check, when you ask for the liver enzymes, we have to ask always three to five days after your last workout, because your workout also changes these values. Mm -hmm. Not 
as much as a, as a cycle of C17, obviously, if you use eight weeks of, of oxandrolone or whatever, the ALT and the AST will be, and the GGT will be very high. But sometimes what happens is, I, I, this is just an advice because some people can watch this video and say, oh yeah, but I did, I, I went to see, I did blood testing the other day and my ALT, AST and GGT, they, they were elevated. I said, when did you do, when, you, when did you do the, yeah, yeah. the, the, the I did, uh, I trained on a Friday and I did on a Saturday. Yes, bro, but you know, you need, every time you train, yeah, yeah. that's why this, this enzyme, they are, they, they are called transaminases. What is a transaminase? So transaminose is a transformation of a protein in another one. So this enzyme is called transaminase. They convert one protein into the other. When you train, obviously you destroy muscle. So there is lots of action of these transaminases. So you need to rest at least three to five days to do a blood test on transaminase. So if you use a C17, you have to check. But this, again, you can do another video about just what exams and how to read exams and which exams to ask. It depends on the drugs that you are using. But I use the same method. I use the same method. So I imagine I'm training. You say to me, now, I don't like injections. I want to do some oral. I want to do a... Uh, oxandrolone, I will advise you to put the oxandrolone also under your tongue and let it dissolve under your tongue. So don't take it as a, as a, as a normal tablet, just put it under your tongue and let it dissolve. So you do this every four to, to, to six hours. So it depends on the dosage that, that, that you are using. And when you finish the cycle, you, when you go to a, to a, a post cycle therapy, you rest again. The, so the, the six times the half life, the half life of oxandrolone is around eight, eight, eight hours, eight. Some people, they take a little bit more, depends on how, how your liver is, because we like to speak about these things, the time that they go in and the time that they go out, but depends on how you are at, at that mm -hmm. stage. Remember that if you take a tablet of oxandrolone on the first week, probably it's much faster for you to metabolize because your liver is very healthy and is, is working perfectly. After eight weeks of using some, something, that uh, it's, it's more liver toxic. Your liver now is not working very well. So now you can take 10 hours, 12 hours. So sometimes if you see me in the videos mm. that I say, oh, okay, oxalone takes eight hours. And then I say another, you know, oxalone takes 12 hours. It depends on how long are you yeah, taking yeah. your substance, how damaged is your, already your liver, okay? Because it depends on the person and depends how your liver is, okay? So just for some, because some people say, no, it also the, depends the, on, the beginning uh, of the video, it was six hours. And now you say it's yeah. eight hours. No, bro, depends on your digestion. Exactly. This is the books Stress, they say. Yeah. The, okay, the books they give, uh, 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 they measure your testosterone because oxandrolone is it's, it's it's tested as a testosterone. So they give you the they, they give you the tablet now and they, they measure testosterone. They see okay, mm -hmm. this substance is, is half life. So the half of the dosage, I give him one hundred milligrams of oxandrolone and, and he has fifty milligrams after eight hours. So the half of life is eight hours. Okay, but now do this for a period of eight weeks. And then do it that in the end of the eight weeks. Oh, now we're going to take 10 or 12 hours. So just to make this, this clear, but I do, I do exactly the same. I go from a cycle, I go for a smaller dosage, or I go straight away to PCT. Because in this case, again, I want, this is just a normal client. He just wants to improve his muscles. Uh, we don't like to push uh, orals more than eight weeks. We don't like, but like I said, it depends on who is the person. The person drinks alcohol. The person has lots of headaches and takes paracetamol. People don't know, but paracetamol is one of the most liver toxic drugs that you can take. So people sometimes, oh, no, I had a headache, I take a paracetamol. I have uh, whatever, I eat my knee in the table, I take a paracetamol. People are taking paracetamol and other things. So is these people taking other, other drugs? Is this, is, is this person drinking alcohol? Uh, is this person has a fatty liver? Is this person use lots of fructose? And I say fructose, not fruits. So don't confuse this sometimes. So if the person has lots of fructose, he, so he has, already, he has already a fatty liver. So his liver is not like working very well. So it's the metabolism of the alcohol or the drugs, they are not very, it's not very good, you know? So let's, let's see who is the person, but make, a, make like a standard. I do the same thing, eight week cycle. I wait for the half-life. So six times the half-life. So again, the half-life is 12 hours. Let's make 12 hours. So 12 hours is half day times six is three days. After three days, I start my 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 my, my post psychotherapy. In this case, I use some liver support during the cycle and after the cycle until I see that the exams are 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 stable. Okay, so I, there is lots of things that you, it can help. If they are not. Uh, there is doesn't exist liver cleans or cleans or whatever people say, but there are like there are substances like tutka, there are substances like silymarine, 
that are substances like um, vitamin E, that are uh, substances like the NAC and acetylcysteine. You can use all these things. You can use uh, uh, glutathione uh, intravenose. Uh, so you can use lots of things that can really help your liver to recover faster from this aggression, from these outside aggressions. But I use the same method, orals, injections, whatever, I use the same method. Mm. And you'd be doing HCG and Clomid with these guys? No, Clomid in the end to recover because mm -hmm. every time you put a tablet in your mouth or injection in your in your muscle, here the, the axis shuts down straight away. Yeah. Okay, it shuts down. So when you recover, I use exactly the same drugs. I use exactly the same principle. I use HCG probably in this case, not, not I can be, I can go a little bit lower, but usually I like to, to, to use 250. I use per week and then in the end of the cycle, I wait those three days, mm -hmm. I wait until the half-life goes down. When the half-life goes down, I start with 1,500 I use or 1,000 I use. So it depends, but I do shorter. So mm -hmm. remember we spoke about in the previous example, we spoke about a long cycle, 16 weeks, because like I said, it depends yeah, yeah. on which drugs you use for how long you use, you know, so it's not just the quantity, it's also how long you use. So you cannot do a 24-week cycle and then you think you're going to recover your axis in three weeks or four weeks. Mm -hmm. It will not happen. It will take six months. You have to use course, HCG yeah. for a long period and clomid and whatever, whatever. You have to take for a long period, small dosages, mm -hmm. because these substances, they have some side effects, uh, especially the vision. You start feeling like a bloody vision. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like or they work with machines and you know, they have... Or, or they said are, the memory... The, everything yeah 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 so the substance that they have and and, uh, and they uh, there are cases they say it's not proven no there is no re reports of this really happening but there are cases of blood clots uh we're using these substances okay but uh, we don't see this happening too much we see people the people the first complaint that people say when they use clomifen and tamoxifen is man i i start having like night bloody vision you know like I go out of my house and I cannot really focus or I'm working my computer. I cannot see the small letters, but, uh, but this, this is just a passenger effect. Remember that every drug has its own effects and side effects. Mm -hmm. So when you use these substances, that's why I said in the beginning of the video, what did I say? I said, or you take or you don't take. Mm -hmm. Don't come with this. No, I take, but I will recover and I will keep the muscle. And I'll... No, I'm sorry. If you gain 10 kilos, you can have the perfect nutrition, the perfect training, the perfect yes. coach, the perfect PCT, the perfect everything. You are going to lose at least two or three kilos, at least. So That's, be yeah. aware of that. Otherwise, all the body blues that we know, they are already 300 kilos. Well, yeah, grow, you know. Grow, 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 grow nonstop. <laughs> okay. So they, what they do, they grow and then they cut. Then they try to grow a little bit more, and then they cut. Then they grow a little bit more, and then more time you train. So in the first year, you can win, you can gain eight kilos of muscle, lean muscle. I'm not speaking about weight. I'm speaking about lean muscle. Second year, you go to four, 3.5 kilos. The third year, two kilos. After the fourth year, you can gain 500 grams per year. Of yeah. yeah. So, so you know. I like gain 20 kilos in a cycle. Bro, yeah. You kilos of water. <laughs> I remember I sat down with my coach and it was just after the Mr. Universe and he was like, okay, we're going to do this and do that and do this and do that. And we were mapping it all out. And then, you know, the next year we're going to come back three pounds heavier. And I was like, shit, man, you know, it's like three pounds, you know, but he's like, yeah, but then three pounds are the right place. So uh, that's great. And one thing I want everybody to remember you, you touched on something very important. I made a note of it to make sure we're going to go back. And that's the thing, guys. And I said in the last podcast, you know, you make some notes, you listen to the podcast. I know a lot of people do these when they drive it, and that's a benefit, but re-listen to them, make some notes, write it down. You know, you put it out in paper, it sticks into your mind more, and then you can reflect back to it. So one thing you said, which was very important is, you know, the drug you put in, it depends on the off, like the leaves to pile up. Okay. So one mistake people often make when they don't understand this, especially the youngsters today, is they will be using aggressive drugs, okay, at a dose that is too high, and then when the buildup starts, the, the half-life is so long that it takes so long for that to come out. For example, if you're using like a trend balloon and anthate at a high dose, this is going to build up very fast, and once it's high, if you hit them side effects and then feelings, which you will, 
you may struggle to get rid of them feeling for some time because the buildup is up and is up. Okay, and um, trembolone has another problem. Trembolone has uh, you have loss of receptors in your acubens nuclei in your brain, so it changes your behavior and it changes forever. Okay, so trembolone changes your behavior. So something I see kids using trembolone, and I sometimes I tell them, bro, this is a drug that we recommend to top bodybuilders that they really live from this, you know. And another thing that also trembolone does is trembolone increases the prolactin. Okay, remember we spoke about DHT, yeah, yeah. we spoke about estradiol, we spoke about SHBG, but you didn't spoke about prolact. That's why I said every drug has its own profile. So the 19 or so trembolone and nandrolone increases prolactin. Okay, prolactin is a drug that increases the prolactin. It means that it increases the production of milk in your breast. Lactin. You start producing milk like a man, start producing milk. And then the problem is the depression that that gives you because yeah. prolactin is activated by a, by a neurotransmitter called GABA. So GABA, I give you an example. When you drink, I don't know if you drink alcohol. I don't drink alcohol. But when you drink alcohol, the first two, three hours, you feel very happy. You are the strongest and the richest guy in the bar. Okay? You want to fight everybody. You want to pay drinks to everybody. Okay? Why so you, you are just drink? <laughs> yes. You are the strongest and the richest one. Why? Because you increase dopamine. So the alcohol increases a lot of dopamine. But then the body, when the dopamine starts going down, you start increasing GABA. GABA increases prolactin, so blocks the, the LH and FSH, so it blocks the, the, the testosterone production. So to make a long story short, this is what exactly trembolone and nandrolone they mm -hmm. do. Okay, so make sure you understand this, this prolactin. Prolactin, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, very, it's, it's also a, a, a hormone that, that it's not very comfortable to have, so you need to fight also those. If you are yeah. using drugs, again, you, now we, ask, you, you ask Nelson, Anava, now you have to take care of the liver. Because testosterone, I don't have to take care of the liver. If I give you testosterone to take, I don't care about the liver because I know there is no effects there. But if I give you trembolone or nandrolone, okay, now you have to use cabergoline, you have to use uh, bromocryptin, so you have to use other type of drugs that now they're gonna, they gonna, because it depends on the, on the drug. That's why testosterone yeah, is yeah. your body knows testosterone, he knows we have testosterone, but trembolone, we don't use it, we don't have it. Huh? Boldenon, we don't have it. Nandrolon, we don't have it. So all these substances, they create other effects in other yeah. tissue. Okay, so that's why when you ask me about Nelson, PCT, well, what drugs are you Yeah, using? exactly, of course. <laughs> it's funny because I was listening to a study a few days ago and it was saying that, you know, when a woman's pregnant, it was all about the product of your environment because, you know, things are infectious and contagious, like, you know, energy and so forth. And even like, like you pick, pick pheromones up from women release pheromones into the air and you get sexual desires and urges and all these things. So we're saying that when a woman's pregnant and obviously your prolactin levels are, are spiking to produce milk and so forth, that the male that's the closest to her, they, they are prolactin levels increase as well. Because not only are they in close and they're obviously picking it up from the air, but it's essential. And the reason being is because it's built into our archive systems that in the first couple of months of child development, the mother and father need to be around a lot and they're not going to have much sleep and they not, probably won't have much time to eat. So their body starts, the male in particular, starts storing fat, you know, yeah. uncontrollably just from this prolactin, regardless of the way they are. And that's where that kind of the, the dad body comes from, <laughs> you know, essentially. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that yeah, incredible? Yeah. Oh, something could be going on inside somebody else yeah, yeah. and have an effect. So um, yeah. the moral of the story, guys, and, you know, if you are going to be using anabolics, you know, and you are going to be doing cycles, then, you know, you, you're investing in for the long run. So there's no ifs and buts that you don't want to do this and the cycle's finished. You have to be taking what you need because ultimately, and like Nelson was saying, he named two bodybuilders who have been around. You got, you know, Flex Lewis, which is a phenomenal seven times Mr. Olympia. Dexter Jackson has competed more times than anyone. And he looks phenomenal even at his age. And these guys, you know, were, were in it for the longevity. You know, and you've got to be thinking about this for the long term. And the downside is, you know, when you're young, you know, probably below the age of 24, I would say, 25. This is not statistics. It's just my own awareness of me and people I've seen around. People tend to think in about the day. They, they're not really thinking about the future. You know, i got to do this if I want kids or i got to do this. But 
guys, if you are going to be doing these things that, you know, potentially have a long-term effect, you need to be knowing about what to do when you're doing it and knowing about what to do when you stop doing it. So, and just, and just to add uh, uh, something to, to that, uh, to that uh, argument that you just gave it now, it's uh, what really kills the bodybuilders. Okay. Okay. We speak about dangerous. This and this is dangerous. Oh, you, okay. Let's, let's be very practical. What kills a bodybuilder or in general sportsman? It's the heart. You don't lie from the liver. You don't lie from the prostate. You don't die from, you die from the heart. Okay. You have now the unfortunate example of John Mandos, you know, an amazing trainer. Okay. So bodybuilders, they die from the heart. Which organ in your body has more receptors to testosterone? The heart. So if you go above 900 nanograms of testosterone, uh, 900 nanograms per deciliter of testosterone, you increase the risk of remodelation of the heart. So you create fibrosis in your heart. But if you go below 350, also happens that. So what we are talking about? We are talking about taking steroids. So you go over 900 nanograms of this liter. And then when you stop, you go below 350. So you are putting yourself in a heart attack. So a very heart uh, 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 attack risk. You understand? So you're putting in too much risk. So cannot just, okay, we speak about liver. And this is liver toxic. And this is kidney toxin, whatever, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. But the heart, man, come on, guys. Don't use high quantities of testosterone. Use the, the amount that you need to really grow. But first, like I said in the last video, yeah. create receptors for that. If you are 70 kilos, don't use the cycle of big Rami. You don't have receptors for that. All that testosterone in your body will do nothing. It will just the side effects. You're going to remodulate so the, the heart changes. So the walls of the, of the, the heart increases. So and then... It, 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 it changes the shape of the heart. It starts compressing the arteries inside. So you have hypertrophy of the heart, but instead of the heart growing outside, it grows inside. So now you squeeze the, the arteries. So now you have less. So you have to pump more to pump the same amount of blood. So you put more pressure. And now you create more muscle in the heart. So the walls of the heart, instead of being like this, now they become like this. So you increase the size. So this happens when the testosterone is too high, also increase you also increase when the, the testosterone is too low below 250 so try to not be 250 nanograms that's why you, how do you see this with blood tests brilliant you know guys and it's very you know from the heart there literally from the heart i mean you know you get your, your blood pressure check check your, your blood work all the time and just make sure you're doing the right things you can see some trophies behind me okay these trophies you know, a lot of them brought some blood, sweat, and tears. They they going to be treasures of mine for the rest of my life. But none of them, none of them, I would miss more as much as the one I, on the left, which is my father, who died when he was twenty nine years old. Granted, he didn't die from using any any type of drug, but he died. And the point is, when you die young, you know this is this is going to be a biggest loss than anything, any trophy that you will not get, any second place that you will not have. So. You know, you have to be sensibly, and like Nelson was saying, you know, once you have the right dose, which is, is you know, it's, it's mostly around, you know, relevant to your muscle mass, but where you want to be looking at then is how can you train harder? How can you engage better? You know, how can you activate the muscle more? And we did a podcast a few days ago with, with Lisa Gelsey, and that was incredible. And we were talking about the very thing about, you know, it goes back to training. You know, drugs have been in sports for a very, very long time. And there's a lot of science, you know, out there. There's a lot of new research. But, you know, don't try to don't try to substitute, you know, hard work because that is ultimately is what is going to carry you to, to the top of any way you want to get to, okay? And the drugs, okay, they are going to help, of course. But at the right dosage, and this thing we're in, this game is a long game. So, you know. We just talk I always, about when... I always say to my clients when they are friends or people that contact me, whatever, Nelson, I want to take this, I want to take that. I want, and I always say, it, that cycle that you are thinking of doing it, it will take you to a place that you cannot reach it naturally. Hmm. If the answer is no, don't do it. Or you want to jump from 20% body fat to 15%. Come on, man. 
and you want exactly. some stamina. Exactly. Come on, it's, it's do a gear, diet, you know, man. Do a proper training, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. I want to increase from 80 to 85 kilos. Man, you can do that without yeah. steroids. Why? It's so like you yeah. steroids to take it to a place that you cannot reach mm. without it. It's like this scenario. It's like having a car with five gears, okay? And you got NOS can strapped to the car. And then you go to the second gear and you push the NOS. I mean, what the hell? You you know, you have been through the gears, you have revved the car, hit the top speed and hit the NOS. So, yeah. you know, it's called gear for for that very reason. It's it's the next gear. <laughs> you know, it's like if you, you don't bring the the next the, the next gear in on, on number one, you know, it's like well, I just started my diet next week, so I'm going to start a cycle. What? What is the goal? I just want to lose a bit of weight. Like Nelson was saying, you can do this with just discipline, you know, and, uh, you know, you don't need to be, you know, getting jacked, you know, unless that's the goal. So, Nelson, thank you again, man. I really appreciate your time. I mean, we have a lot more to talk about. This is why you're going to be, you know, consistently getting on, and it's, it's great. And um, like always, we're going to put some links below and appreciate your time and effort. And um, thank you, man. Really, thank you. No worries. Like I said in the beginning, it's always an honor and a pleasure to share this information, to help people to not do mistakes. Okay, I can make money with this information, but I don't really believe that's, that's my goal. Of course, we all need money to survive, but my goal is really to help people and to really empower people. Like I said in the first video, I'm a personal improver. I try to improve the life of people in all the ways that I can. And I, I really believe that our people cannot afford sometimes to pay to a, to a professional coach. And sometimes even the professional coaches, they, they are a little bit behind in knowledge and they, 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 they really don't invest in the knowledge that they should, they should uh, do it. And I know that there is lots of people that they, they go to YouTube and, and they, they try to find information, which is sometimes difficult because there's so much information, contradictory information on YouTube that you can be misleading of doing some mistakes. And what I try here to do is to try to minimize the risks because the risk is there, okay? As long as you get out of your mother, you know, as long as you're born, the risk is there. You can, so there is, every time you take a decision of doing anything in your life, there is a risk. But there is also uh, a safe way of doing things or a safer way, okay? So this is what I try to do, try to educate people through videos, through Instagram, through all the the the, the social media that that, that I that I can uh, really reach to try to help people and educate people, okay? Because I have the experience of the bodybuilding, and I always say this to my clients and all the my friends, doctors that I speak, and I always say, man, you can say whatever you want, you can say whatever you want, but this sport will always be fifty percent bro science and fifty percent science. Okay, because some people now they everything they want to prove everything with science. Oh, but there is a study that says that doing cardio in the morning doesn't work. Mm. Oh, no, now there is a study that says that creatine is bad for your kidneys. But now there is a study. Man, there is always, in my opinion, this sport will be all this science. Yes, we have to study. Yes, we have to study for physiology. Yes, but people are different. People are individual. So we need to try, you need to try, go for a good coach, like I said in the last video, try to find someone that really can help you, is there to help you and to support you along the way on the good moments and bad moments. And this is the way. So try to minimize the risks and try to be aware of you really want to do this step or you take it or you don't take it. If you don't want to, to uh, take these risks, just do your diet, do your training, put hard work, make what I say to myself lots of times, make discipline the major force in your life. And that's how you achieve things in life. And then there is other things that can, can help. Yes, can give you the 5%, yes. But the 95% is your, is your responsibility. So put effort in your 95%. If you have to do one set more in the gym to create a principle of overloading, if you have to increase 100 more calories in your diet, if you have to increase here, to increase that, why using anabolic steroids? If you can, you are still growing. You are one year of training, two years of training, why? Just go to your maximum of your potential, maximum of your genetics. It takes mm. three to four years to reach that. And then you see if you have genetics for this sport, if you want to compete or not. Don't start training and you have 35 centimeters of arm and you already want to compete because, you know, you are the biggest guy in school. No, it's not like that, you know. If you are, if you are two meters tall, you cannot be a Formula One driver. 
You understand? If you are 150, you cannot be a basketball NBA player. Okay, you can improve as a, as a basketball player. You can improve as a driver, but you will never be. So make sure you choose the right way for what you really like and you want your genetics for. Okay, that's why people sometimes say, oh, big Rami is big like that because it takes lots of drugs. Man, it's completely the opposite. These people, they are the most scary people that I, that I know. They don't use that, that amount of drugs that people think that they use. They are so scared. They are so afraid because just to carry, imagine the, the heart of that guy. Imagine the heart yeah. of Ronnie Coleman. The, all the blood that that heart needs to pump every single day because fat has no circulation or has a little bit of circulation. has no, almost no blood in the fat. So if you are 150 kilos of fat, your heart does need, so the peripheral circulation of the blood does need to go too much because mm -hmm. the fat is need too much uh, oxygen yeah. and, and nutrient supply. But the muscle... <laughs> And if you train every day, imagine all the, 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 the flow of the blood and nutrients that the body needs to do it every single day. So that heart is always there. So don't think these people, they just use drugs, drugs, drugs. They're, they're, it's because they're like that. No, they born from, for the sport. They went to the gym. They're already 100, 110 kilos. When they went first time to the gym, I remember, I remember um, the, the owner of Metroflex gym, uh, saying, man, the first time I saw Ronnie Coleman, his veins was pumping out of his legs. And people come to him in the gym and say, man, are you going to compete? I said, no, I'm, I'm going to join the gym. So he's going to, he, he was joining the gym that they never trained in his life. And his, his veins was already pumped out of his legs. So you see, the first professional competition that Ronnie Coleman win, it was natural. Mm -hmm. So come on, guys, don't think these things that just happened by drugs, drugs. This is why people now try to find shortcuts for everything. Oh, he has he's like this because he takes drugs. Oh, if I use drugs like this, I saw a guy in the internet saying, if I use the steroid, then I do the cycle and the blast and the cruise, and this I will be like, no, it's not like that. You need to find if this is really for you or not. We are here to help you and support you if you really like, but make sure you understand that it's not the competition that makes you a, a great man. It's not the competition. It's your own competition against yourself to try to be better, to try to improve, okay. I want to be a better man. I want to be a better father, a better professional, a better husband. And then beside of that, I want to do this sport. If I have genetics for this sport, if I have sponsors to continue to my journey, to my professional journey in this sport, okay, let's do it. But if it's not, come on, guys, don't, don't call me to lose five kilos or to lose 5% of body fat and ask me for steroids because I will not tell you to take steroids. So, man, wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning and do one hour of cardio with 130 BPMs. So that's it. If you do it like that for three months, you're going to lose those five kilos. You don't need steroids for that. Love it. That's a love it. It's so, it's so raw and it's so real. And it's, yeah. uh, it's, that's, that's what it is. And that's what we're about is bringing, you know, bringing minds like this together, speak the same message, your hard work gets there, you know, get up and do it. Nobody's going to do it for you and be realistic, you know, and, and don't look for the shortcut because, well, there is one. You'll get there faster, but you'll regress just as fast. And, you know, yes, yes. Nelson, thank you once again, man. I really appreciate okay. it. Thank you. And guys, you. girls, thank you very much. If you haven't done yet, subscribe. Comment below. Let me know what you think of this podcast. It's always great to hear from you. And put your questions below and we will answer them as well and get back to you. Thank hey guys, you. Bye. See you. Thank you. Thank you.